What is happening, guys? Cowboy here, and welcome back to the Dark Souls Remastered walkthrough. So, as a reminder, on the last episode, we wrapped up a couple different priorities, namely acquiring uh, two of the better rings in the game, of course, the Havel's Ring and the Ring of Favor and Protection, as well as farming on up our Titanite to upgrade our weapons. Of course, I am now using the Claymore, uh, just to kind of give you an idea of how much that is uh, worth for us. If we suck to the Drake Sword and toggle our stats, you can see that the Claymore at plus 5 does 188, and while the Drake Sword still does do 200, keep in mind that right now our stats are very, very low. We're at 1613, uh, which is actually pretty close to the base requirements of the Claymore. On top of that, just to kind of showcase a little bit why I recommend the Claymore so much, is the moveset of this thing is fantastic. We have a heavy attack that's a strong thrust, which is going to be great for tight hallways. On top of that, we have a very wide sweeping R1 with it, which is going to be great if we're getting surrounded by enemies. Uh, our sprinting attack does a 360. Uh, and then on top of that, when we two-hand, very easy to stay on the target with nice vertical swings, which are actually excellent when it comes to cutting the tails off of enemies, which is fairly common in Dark Souls 1 as compared to the later entries in the series. But anyway, moving forward from here, there's Andre. Uh, we're going to be running this way, and the first thing to do is run on past this Titanite Demon. Now, if you really want, you can go ahead and try to fight this guy right now. To be honest, I would recommend just running past. It's just not really worth the headache it'll cause for the time being. And as you can see, not exactly hard to get past him. Uh, right now, we're going to be heading on towards Dark Root Garden. So as we go through this area, there's going to be a couple of tree people like this guy. They will whip you like that. They also have a uh, hug-type attack where they'll latch on to you and give you a big old hug. But in general, just kind of beat them down. They will drop moss, which you can use to cure both bleed as well as poison. See, there's the hug attack. Alright, and you can see a treasure right there. We're going to be getting that a little bit later, but for now, just don't worry about it. Let's see how that, the, the whip hands, they're kind of delayed, making it a little bit tricky, but... You know, as you probably guessed, we can chop them on down pretty easily. Um, we're going to have a soul item right here at this rock. Pick that up. We're going to grab a hidden bonfire over here. Now, this big glowy thing right here is the Crest of Artorias. Uh, to open that door, we need to get the seal that the blacksmith is selling. It's going to cost 20,000 souls, and... Eventually, we're going to get it, uh, mainly because it's going to give us access. I mean, all the areas that gives us access to, we can get to without the seal. But the main reason to get that seal is going to be that this is the closest bonfire to the boss fight that's past that seal. Uh, for now, at least, I would recommend just kind of ignoring it. We're going to end up coming back here a little bit later. So instead, we're going to go down this path. Make a turn right here, and there's going to be a bunch of trees. You can see the item there, but there's all of these trees that are pretending to be asleep. And one thing that is worth noting here, you'll notice how the opening attack ended up doing damage to them. But after that, I had to, like, wait for them to pop up. And a good indicator is after you hit them, right now I'm going to start clicking uh, R3. And... Basically, right there. Until I'm able to log on, I can't actually hit them and do damage, so just keep that in mind. But grab this, and then we're going to go through the fog. Right. Now we're going to go to the right first, and we have a tree right here. Just go ahead and whack this a couple times. And with the fake tree destroyed, we can go ahead and proceed on through. Go ahead and kill the weird frog manta ray guy. Not exactly hard, but they, uh, you know, if you give them a chance, they can end up hurting you a little bit. And we're going to go this way, and as you can see from the movement, we already have another fake tree waiting for us. So go ahead and chop this one on down as well. And 
then for now, just stick to the left. Uh, up ahead, we're going to fight more of the antifrogs. Jump up right when we reach this cliff. That one hippity hopped his way all the way off. Oh, Stone Knight wants to engage us sooner than later. So these guys are big and they seem intimidating, but they're not that bad. Uh, probably the scariest thing they do is this, which is known as Tranquil Walk of Peace. And you can see right now I'm pressing circle and my character can't roll. And what Tranquil Walk of Peace does is it basically it, it drastically increases uh, what your your item encumbrance is. So it, you basically can't move very well, you can't roll, etc. I'm gonna go over here, grab the Soul of the Proud Knight. And we're gonna run this way. Back to uh, right here. I'm gonna go up this and we'll grab that item that we saw earlier across the ravine. Now this is the Wolf Knight Ring. Uh, the Wolf Knight Ring increases poise, and if you're coming from Dark Souls 3, uh, the idea of poise is probably like a foreign concept to most of you. So, in Dark Souls 1, the way poise works is it's an armor stat, and basically the more poise you have, the more hyper armor you have as you go to attack your opponents. So, somebody that has a lot of poise will be able to basically hyper armor through an enemy's attack. Uh, it's just going to ensure that you don't really get interrupted. And it's actually quite powerful. Uh, there's instances where you could have enough poise that a boss starts attacking you, and despite that, you're able to just tank the boss's hit and keep attacking. So it is a very, very powerful mechanic in the original Dark Souls, uh, especially in PvP. Definitely cannot state how important poise is. So keep that in mind. Um, personally, since I'm running some heavier gear right now, namely the shield as well as the boar helmet, Havel's Ring is going to be the best choice for me, but uh, the Wolf Ring is quite significant. Alright, so there was where we fought those trees. This is where we uh, went for the fake tree, and what we're going to do is take down this knight first. Same as before, I gotta wait till I can lock on before I can start damaging him. And there's gonna be more knights up ahead, as well as some trees that are trying to stay hidden. Go ahead and boot the trees to prevent the ambush. If you go ahead and you grab that item, all this stuff will just pop up and start attacking you, so. See, the knight's now waking up. Right, so now the second knight's up, we're actually going to back up a little bit, get a little bit of space between us, because we have two knights and then there's two more trees that spawn. Right now, our priority is finishing this guy off. Oh, of course, he's going to block that. Well, this is why we have space behind us. We can always move back. Never underestimate a running attack or jumping attack. If you ever get stuck, one of the best things to do is what you see me doing right now. Just kite so all the enemies are backed up into a hallway, and then you're going to press forward and right trigger at the same time to do a jumping attack. Uh, the jumping attacks are, in general, usually the strongest attack in a weapon's moveset. Very, very powerful. Oh, mother. Mm. Tried to swap to my shield instead of blocking with the sword. Could not get it out fast enough. So head back down. Uh, similar to before, we're actually going to take down 
these trees once again. These guys will respawn. Uh, since they're up at this point, because of you uh, triggering that trap. Oh, no. Shield out real fast. like a landscaper. Since all that stuff wanted to aggro last time, it's uh, a little bit excessive to use a black fire bomb, but. Well, as expected of trees, fire will absolutely decimate them. Actually, I don't want to use up all of those, so I'm going to swap to fire bomb real fast. other night here. Well, some more trees. So you can see the, the gist here is they're gonna, you know, regardless of what angle you come from, these things are gonna attack you. So he's already got Tranquil Walk. Best thing to do once it's on you is honestly just block up. Block up, circle behind, attack him. Just remember that if this comes on, you know, you can't run. Uh, if you try to roll, it's gonna be a fat roll. The best thing to do is just Stay calm and take down the enemy. Don't worry about trying to escape because, I mean, if it's on you, you're not really getting away. Very nice. And then here we go with the Elite Knight set. So the Elite Knight is probably one of the better sets in the game to get early on. Um, very, very good armor values on these, as you can see. Also a pretty healthy amount of poise. And I'm still mid-rolling. That's fantastic. We got this stone guy. Take him out real fast. And from here, we're going to go up and go to a boss. So, as a general rule of thumb, before we go fight a boss, it's always good to spend our souls. So we're going to kill that guy, go over here, kill the snake, weird snake thing that's on the tree. And we should have one more giant. Here we go. This way should be another snake tree for us to swat down. Oh, that is the exit out. Hang on, I missed my snake tree. There it is. Kill this one and artisan. Or the tree pop up as well. Walk past kill that. And now we're ready. So we're going to be running right back over there to go to the boss. As I mentioned before that, we are going to go spend our souls. There's nothing more reckless than going into the boss fight with souls that you really can't afford to lose. Our hollowing at this point. 
now uh, we're gonna go and fight the Moonlight Butterfly. Uh, in general, the Moonlight Butterfly is not bad. Uh, been following this guide, you should have the Crest Shield. Go ahead and put that on. Another thing you're gonna want to do is put on things like fire bombs or throwing knives. Uh, if you want, you can also put on the bow. But to be honest, the damage you'll get from it really isn't gonna be uh, that high here. Uh, this boss fight, it's not difficult, but it is a bit of a fight of attrition. The boss is going to do a number of spells, and then it'll land, and you'll have a small window where you can damage it, and then it'll get back up, do more spells, and land, and you'll have a small window where you can damage it. And uh, basically, this cycle just repeats until you beat the boss. You're gonna head on in past that guy. We're gonna get up far enough that they de aggro, but we're actually gonna go down and grab a summon, just to make this fight even easier. So we'll give it a second. Stone Knights should go away. Oh, see he is turning around. Now if we go downstairs where the bush was, if you're human, you should find... Oh, no, you did not go away. Okay. We can do things the hard way, I guess. see that summon sign. You don't necessarily need Witch Beatrice for this fight, but honestly it will make it really, really easy. Just because you can pull out Witch Beatrice and then sit there behind the Crest Shield and basically just kind of hang out while she kills the boss for you. Another good thing to note is anytime you're going to summon an NPC, make sure that you have killed any enemies between that summon sign and the boss. Otherwise, the NPC could kind of go off on their own and get involved in the fights and you know, potentially start losing out. There it is. There's a couple different things the Moonlight Butterfly will do. Uh, most of its damage is magic. It has some spears that are very fast. You can just block the spears. Uh, it has that slow magic ray. I generally just roll through it. Um, you can throw fire bombs. 15 should be around enough. As I mentioned, after a while, the butterfly will land, and then you'll be able to just do damage to it. But honestly, all you really have to do, as you can see right here, if you summon Witch Beatrice, you can basically just chill behind your crest shield, and Witch Beatrice will do all the work for you. So right there after it landed, you might have noticed how there was like a small green glow. Uh, before it would get back up, it'll actually explode. So just keep that in mind if you are doing the traditional method of just whack away. Uh, you're going to want to move out of the way before that goes off. I'm going to go ahead and pop one of these, mainly just to get my humanity count up. I do want to actively work towards having that 10 active humanity for item discovery. So from here, we're going to go on up the stairs. Up. And we have the Watchtower Basement Key, and we have the Divine Ember and a Homeward Bone. Uh, so since you got a Homeward Bone right here, you might as well use it. Uh, it's worth just popping that and heading on out. Uh, so the Divine Ember, we can give that over to uh, Andre. We can use that to make a weapon divine. Divine weapons are important as they will ensure that skeletons stay dead after we kill them instead of resurrecting. Uh, in addition to that, that key we just picked up is what we can use to access the tower that Havel is in. So if you haven't gotten your Havel ring yet, now is a great time to go pick that up. But at this point, we're going to level on up. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm still going to be focusing Vitality. I want to get that up to 30 before I do a heavier investment in things like Strength or Dex. Uh, but in the next episode, we're going to be heading on down into Darkroot Basin. So for now, at least, we will wrap things up here. Make sure to stay tuned, and we will catch you guys next time.